I uh, hope you can all see my screen. Uh, if you can, someone uh, leave a message in the chat just to know that everything is working as it should. Awesome. Thank you, Cody. It's an early morning for you there. All right, so uh, today we will going, be going through our intelligent solution. So what that means is uh, you'll see that uh, a lot of it is automated or semi-automated in its approach, uh, whether it's the software side or whether it's the actual data acquisition uh, collecting side of the uh, power spans, whether you're dealing with transmission, subtransmission, or distribution level grids. So the key question, uh, are we inspecting these uh, grids or spans, whatever you want to call them, enough? Uh, in the US alone, we have more than 190,000 kilometers of transmission lines and more than, uh, I think, 3 million kilometers of, sorry, there's a typo there, of transmission uh, lines connecting more than 145 million users throughout the country. Uh, so alongside Australia, uh, China, it's one of the longest interconnected electricity markets in the world. Uh, when users approach us, uh, or if they do approach you, uh, I'm sure one of the um, one one of the main things that they will bring up is uh, preventing blackouts and, ex in extreme cases, uh, preventing fires that may be started by sparks uh, due to whether it's encroachment uh, or other uh, related reasons. So the big question, uh, I'm sure uh, most people here are familiar with LiDAR, uh, or I hope you are. Uh, it's an awesome technology. Uh, so the main questions that we uh, pose today is why LiDAR for power inspections? Uh, quite often when we have, whether it's national, state-owned, or uh, privately owned grid owners and operators come to us, uh, they tell us that right now their solution is uh, largely man hours, um, maybe if it's uh, slightly more advanced, they will use uh, adopt a doctor helicopter uh, with uh, two or three personnel on those helicopters using binoculars, uh, carrying out uh, manual inspection uh, and then taking down notes. Obviously, we all know that is very low efficiency uh, and also uh, very costly. So again, why LIDAR? Firstly, highly accurate, depending on your system, uh, you are looking at gaining anywhere from uh, within millimeters to five centimeters accuracy. Uh, so today we will be mainly covering uh, drone, uh, UAV-based LiDAR, as well as mobile mapping systems, so your car-mounted LiDAR systems. Uh, cost efficient, uh, although you may bring up uh, a system may cost uh, upwards of, you know, 100,000 uh, US dollars uh, for a highly advanced LiDAR system, but in the long run, your return on investment is going to be much higher than anything uh, that you can find uh, on the same level on the market. Uh, fast, uh, using whether it's drone or your vehicle uh, mounted LiDAR, you will be able to cover much more ground while uh, coming to my fourth point, getting uh, much more detailed, extremely de detailed uh, point clouds, uh, which for those who don't know is uh, the data format, or what we call uh, the data that we collect from LIDAR. <clears throat> uh, number five, it's highly penetrative. So it penetrates uh, vegetation. Uh, this uh, comes into play more for these distribution spans uh, alongside your, uh, or within your intercity or suburban uh, power spans. So uh, some of you will see uh, wherever you are in the world, if you look uh, around your suburb, you'll see that most of these power lines may be creeping in between vegetation. So uh, between two trees or maybe within one tree that has been cut uh, so that a line can pass through. So with this vegetation uh, penetration ability of LIDAR, that's really gonna help you analyze down to your specific uh, margins. And obviously number six, uh, very safe. All right, so uh, firstly, we'll be getting into our uh, UAV 
uh, drone-based inspection solution uh, of transmission networks, how I've broken it down today uh, based on experience and the solutions that we offer to end users and uh, clients uh, and partners is that uh, UAV or uh, if you have a large uh, ground, a lot of ground to cover, uh, helicopter mounted LIDAR uh, for transmission networks. And then, sorry, and then your a uh, your mobile mapping systems, your vehicle mounted mounted lidar for your distribution spans, uh, whether it's suburban, uh, intercity, uh, you name it. So Green Valley solution, uh, which is also basically lidar solution, lidar solution on uh, inspecting power grids, uh, which can be very daunting if you don't have the right tools. Those tools, whether it's hardware or software, we'll cover both of those. Uh, if you're just joining us, welcome. So uh, hazard or danger point uh, vegetation encroachment reports, uh, tower inclination reports, uh, tree fall, uh, sag and sway caused by environmental factors. So all of those I will be going into detail uh, on the output uh, and the actual workflow uh, needed to produce those. Uh, precise measurement of the actual towers, whether you're working with tensile, uh, or other types of towers, uh, we are able to get very detailed classif uh, classification, automatic, uh, automated classification, should I say, uh, of your point clouds. And then also, uh, apart from your, uh, sorry, apart from your collection uh, using LIDAR, we also uh, use fine inspection using smaller drones and uh, cameras, uh, which I'll be going into detail as well. The main products that I will be introducing today, uh, the Lie Air X3, uh, X3H as well, and Lie Powerline, our professional grade powerline uh, post processing and analysis software. So, uh, Cody and Chung from the US office last week went into detail about Green Valley as a whole, uh, all our solutions, hardware and software. And today I will be diving deep into the power sector. So the UAV inspection uh, workflow, should I say, uh, everything that you see here is self-developed, uh, self, uh, everything has been uh, researched and developed by Green Valley International and implemented on a day-to-day -day basis by us. Live Plan is our uh, pre-planning software. So what that does, uh, importing your KMLs, whether uh, whichever mapping, sorry, maps uh, platform you're using. Uh, we are able to input our KMLs and then fly direct uh, planned routes over your uh, key areas of interest, being your spans. Uh, after you acquire your point cloud, uh, you can bring that into uh, one, obviously, firstly, in Live GeoReference, our pre-processing software, carrying out PPK uh, to obtain your point cloud, and then bring that into Live Powerline. Uh, in Live Powerline, we get our uh, basic uh, models of danger encroachment, tree fall, uh, high wind, sag and sway inspection. Uh, for some users, that is the end of the line. That's all they need, uh, which is great. And then uh, more times, uh, more often than not for our transmission uh, level uh, spans, users will need a detailed uh, inspection using uh, imaging. So that's what you see here on the right. Uh, it says here, Phantom, there are a few systems that can carry this out. Uh, in Live Powerline, we are able to uh, generate these flight uh, routes for these smaller drones to carry out fine inspection, which I'll also go into detail later. So let's dive uh, right into it. Uh, after we've collected our data, which I won't go into too much detail uh, about today, uh, I think the hardware of site is only uh, part of partially uh, our tool to get obtain you this point cloud, uh, what really unlocks the door for the power sector is uh, your analysis, so your post-processing and what you can really provide in terms of deliverables. So here we have a video uh, showing our classification of our span. So uh, input your point cloud should load fairly quickly, and then you will want to open up your uh, XML. So what this does is it entails actually your line types, uh, your different uh, KVs, so uh, what level of transmission you're dealing with, uh, and then through this, 
uh, we're able to determine which algorithms will work best for your post-processing. So now you'll see a loaded point cloud uh, showing elevation, uh, displayed by elevation. And then the next step for your in-house in uh, or whether if you're, well, if you're a contractor and you're being outsourced to do this kind of work, uh, it's very simple. All you need to do uh, for this automatic, uh, automated classification is select uh, a point, ideally on the uppermost point uh, of your tower. So you'll see our operator going through it now, just selecting a point on these towers. Once these towers are selected and we run this uh, semi-automated classification, what the software actually does is it uh, segments each tower uh, into a separate span. Uh, and then we will load all of those spans, or if you choose, you can load one by one uh, back into the software for further analysis. So now our towers have been classified or have been, sorry, selected. Uh, and we will run the classification function very fast. Uh, I think he selected uh, just under 20 uh, towers in the span, and you will see uh, our span has been classified. It's not perfect. Uh, this is a lower voltage uh, 10 kV uh, span. So some of the um, lines are a little bit thin. Uh, you'll see some areas have or the uh, lower crossing lines have not been correctly uh, classified. So what we'll go, uh, what we'll do is go into our manual classification and uh, classify them as your conductors. Okay. Uh, this, you'll basically only find that this happens for your lower voltage uh, distribution level spans for the larger, uh, whether it's 128, 128, 138, one, uh, 330 or 500 kV uh, spans, the classification results will be uh, generally quite spot on. You'll see that the building has been classified as well. All right, cool. Now onto our actual uh, first deliverable that we are able to provide, uh, which is the automated danger point analysis. So again, working with our the previous span, So you'll see that here, previously we set some uh, distances, so high veg vegetation. This uh, varies largely based on the voltages that we're working with. Uh, so here, anything within a 4.5 uh, meter uh, encroachment is going to be classified as dangerous. At this point, nothing else needs to be changed and we can just run the function. Again, very fast, uh, maybe just over two seconds. And then you will see that these uh, encroachment danger points have been uh, classified red along the span. That's all well and good, but uh, right now that doesn't actually provide anything for your operators or whoever you're doing this job for to see. Uh, so while you're running this uh, function, the software actually automatically generates this report. So that's why we say it's an automated uh, danger point analysis and reporting. If you didn't see that clearly, let me just, uh, apologies. Just play that one. These reports I'll show again uh, later. Apart from the actual reports, very straightforward. We have a Excel uh, sheet detailing all of the positions uh, 
and obviously your distances to the uh, encroachment. Screenshot of the actual report automatically generated. Uh, these uh, positions have been transformed. So you'll see that uh, the software cuts a section and you'll see that there is a 2.1 uh, meter encroachment uh, of the lowermost line from this uh, tree located here and then the position uh, of this encroachment. Next, probably the second uh, uh, request or the second function that we get asked about the most, uh, tree fall analysis. So in areas where they, there may be uh, one uh, steep uh, hills or steep uh, risings uh, along the span and uh, accompanied with high wind, uh, this will cause uh, tree fall. So what uh, this function uh, entails is one, firstly, we run a classification of each single tree. So this is, some of you may be quite familiar, this can also be done in LiDAR 360. So now we have uh, segmented each single tree along the span. Uh, now we can run our actual tree fall. Take your tree fall, start. What the algorithm does is it uh, emulates each single tree falling in the direction of uh, your power line, uh, your span, and then uh, showing your areas of concern or areas of interest where those trees may clip or even bring down the uh, span. So you see uh, two meters, nothing of too much concern until we get here. Uh, 68 centimeters. Uh, so if this tree was to fall, it would come pretty close. Um, and then uh, different factors, say if wind was to be considered, uh, that could definitely be considered uh, an area to be uh, addressed. Gain screenshot of our automatically generated tree fall report. report. Uh, so you'll find in Live Powerline, uh, all of the functions as you're running them, the software will actually generate these reports for you, which are already uh, handing you your deliverables, uh, making your life easier. All you need to do uh, is basically run the functions, which uh, if you've just joined us, um, all it really takes is one click or a few. Uh, another one, uh, this depends largely on the region to be uh, surveyed, to be inspected, uh, and also the line type, as you can see, we're going through, we have a large array, wide array of uh, different line types. This, uh, what this actually means is uh, it takes into consider consideration the uh, different, uh, to put it in layman's terms, uh, stretchiness and the weight of each line tensile strength, um, and then takes uh, that into consideration as you're running your uh, wind sway analysis. So you can set different uh, wind levels uh, and your environmental factors such as temperatures. Once you set those, uh, basically uh, generated instantaneously. This actually uh, generates a SHP file of the uh, Sway option, which is uh, can be really cool uh, if you're demoing this on site, showing your uh, people that you're trying to convince, whether it's grid uh, operators, managers, uh, you can show them exactly at this wind level. Uh, this is the Sway that you can expect. And then obviously, obviously key, after you've run this sway, uh, what you're still looking for is actually your encroachment. So again, run, run your danger point based on this uh, high wind analysis. A few seconds and again, done. 
So already based on those uh, static uh, conductors, now uh, we're moving further on and addressing higher wind situations. So your sway of your conductors, uh, you'll see there's many lines along each conductor. So it actually shows five different points of sway from your maximum uh, back down to your static position. Again, automatically generated report. Uh, very easy to interpret. Uh, obviously, the lines are a little thick, so they aren't that. Uh, I'll go on to the next uh, photo. So this one is a little bit easier to distinguish your uh, different trajectories of your sway. So the left and right being the uh, of uh, your highest wind situation, and then back down to your static position of your conductor at its resting position. And then at which point uh, is the closest encroachment? Luckily here, 6.75 meters, uh, not of too much concern. Uh, Lie Power Line has been uh, a software that have, we have been uh, developing uh, and providing users uh, to users for almost seven years now. Uh, there are lots of functions that are uh, designed specific for separate uh, or individual grid operators, uh, companies, country, national grids that have come and approached us. Uh, I won't go into all of them in detail today, but uh, I have uh, have here a few of the more important ones, uh, or the ones that we get uh, asked about quite often. So obviously, uh, SAG uh, under different, uh, say, ice loading, uh, different uh, factors, your shield line SAG and your conductor SAG, uh, tree fall analysis, which I went into detail. And then one that is actually uh, quite important, but overlooked, uh, your tower inclination. So after you've, uh, a grid has, grid operator has put in a new uh, span or uh, area of spans, um, carrying out this tower inclination in live power line will allow you to see exactly if this tower is put in at the right angle that it should be at. Uh, obviously on flat surfaces, this is quite straightforward, but uh, more often uh, than not, when we are approached for this, it's alongside your mountains, uh, your valleys, where electricity is passing through a hard to reach area uh, where erosion may, may happen. So uh, going through with live power line and your LIDAR system, uh, say once a year, can be really beneficial uh, in prolonging your grid life. Now that was the cloud side of our uh, UAV inspection. Now I will go into uh, our fine inspection using different uh, imaging cameras. So one, uh, again in live power line, uh, as you can see here, and I'll go into more detail later, we can draw these fine inspection routes. So this has uh, absolute coordinates for your drone to stop. Apologies, and the angles that at which they want to take angle, uh, take images, whether it's of your conductors, uh, your um, insulators, whatever it may be, points of interest. And then we do have a uh, analysis tool for that as well. So I won't go into too much detail, but I'll find infection uh, route generation. So when we have a transmission span, as you can see here, um, after classification, the software has identified different uh, areas of interest or parts of interest. So yeah, your conductors, uh, insulators, um, whatever it may be, and classified those. And now going into our fine inspection, we mark these points.
that will suggest the best angle and distance, uh, which for uh, outdoor operators, so your drone pilots, you will also want to take into consideration uh, your uh, environmental factors. So wind, say if you're flying a Phantom 4, uh, it's not going to be as stable as say your M300 or your free fly system drone. Uh, so with the smaller drones, uh, we usually recommend anywhere from four to eight meters to capture these images. After this route has been, uh, your waypoints have been drawn, uh, we can actually carry out a simulation of what the drone is going to see as it's on its route to capture these uh, images. Uh, quite cool. Awesome. Oh. From those images generated uh, using your smaller imaging drone, uh, we are able to feed these images into uh, our processing platform uh, that we have uh, developed alongside one of our partners. Um, if you are interested, do reach out to us. It, it is uh, an amazing tool, very powerful. So everything that you see here has been automatically uh, identified as problems. It's not going to get it 100% perfect. Uh, that's just not the case, uh, but it's good. So you see here, uh, nest can be identified, uh, missing insulators, missing bolts, uh, screws, um, missing pieces of your insulators, conductors that have come uh, unthreaded, or key areas of concern that are going to lower your efficiency uh, in your grid. So getting those fixed at the end of the day is going to uh, increase your efficiency and save taxpayers money. If you do have any questions, uh, do leave them in the chat uh, or I will come and ask if you have any questions at the end um, of the webinar. Again, just a showcase. On the left, our route in, uh, route generated by Live Powerline fed into, uh, this was the Phantom 4, fed into uh, the DJI flight app and carrying out the automatic flight mission to obtain these images. Uh, most of those uh, that I've covered up to this point are quite vital. Uh, I would even say key. Um, just most grid operators, um, companies, they don't know that it can be that simple. Uh, additional deliverables that Green Valley International go above and beyond to uh, offer uh, is one of them. And a very, very important one is our infrared imaging, uh, sorry, infrared imaging uh, of our towers and our conductor. Uh, so what this actually uh, does and shows you is overheating uh, on your tower and along your conductor. Uh, the cause for, over for overheating, uh, there could be many, uh, rust, um, just to name one. And this overheating uh, in the long term is going to cause uh, massive inefficiencies of your power uh, transmission. So this, again, is... Uh, many drones nowadays offer uh, infrared imaging, feeding this into our platform, the same one you, uh, as previously mentioned for the fine inspection of images. Uh, it will generate these reports of your minimum and maximum uh, temperatures along your points of interest. All right, cool. Now, uh, I've covered uh, the how and the what, so how uh, we can offer these uh, amazing solutions to those who, um, those interested um, and what we can offer. Uh, but now you may be uh, wondering, so what does it take? So how much work is involved in getting this done? Uh, if I'm quoting a uh, work or right now, if I'm just looking at getting into this sector, which can be very daunting, daunting uh, if you don't have the know-hows and the tools, uh, this is a rough breakdown. 
So with your UAV drone, uh, we recommend flight speeds at anywhere from five to 10 uh, meters per second. Uh, what this entails uh, in a six hour uh, day of flying, uh, you're covering uh, up to 20 kilometers per day. <clears throat> uh, with the efficiency of uh, light air, LIDAR systems and your drones nowadays, uh, a one man team is sufficient enough to carry out this 20 kilometers per day. Uh, and then the deliverables that I've uh, gone into detail about uh, before that I won't repeat. Uh, actually, I will uh, talk about one point is your terrain models. Uh, not all clients, uh, actually more often than not, they're not going to need a terrain model, um, but it is something worthwhile noting that uh, with your LiDAR scans and your point cloud generating any terrain model, whether it's surface or terrain or contours, uh, basically, it's very fast, very straightforward with one click. All right, so that uh, was the end of our transmission or our UAV inspection uh, of your rural tra uh, transmission or your uh, distribution uh, where you can fly a drone. Now I'll go into our metro, our urban, whether it's inner city, suburban, uh, anywhere where you can't fly a drone, so no fly zones, uh, well, that's where this solution is so key uh, and can offer you uh, basically all the deliverables that are needed uh, that I've mentioned already. So the one that we're uh, showcasing today is the Lime Mobile, so self-developed, uh, self-produced by Green Valley International, this bad boy here, uh, mounted on an SUV. Uh, you can operate at uh, up to 120 kilometers an hour, and that's been tried and tested by our clients. Uh, but obviously, if you're collecting along a suburban uh, area, you're not going to be uh, going that fast. And then processing using our LiDAR 360 MLS. Uh, so that's our mobile mapping uh, software solution, which has conveniently a uh, professional power line distribution level analysis uh, module. So the uh, in workflow, uh, not too much difference to the UAV inspection workflow. So Lie Mobile to collect your LiDAR point cloud, uh, Lie Geo reference to bring it all together, whether it, you're running RTK or P PPK in your system, uh, obtaining your point cloud, and then your and then LiDAR 360 MLS. Again, a turnkey solution. Just showcasing, uh, again, the segmentation or classification, classification results, uh, semantic segmentation using LiDAR 360 MLS. Uh, this can be done uh, basically with your inner city suburban data anywhere. Uh, this software using deep learning will classify your buildings uh, your distribution spans, as well as vegetation, cars, anything of interest. Uh, very cool video, uh, playing by itself. So, collecting your starting points along your distribution span, uh, the software is going to pick it up by itself and run that uh, classification. And then here we see uh, basically it's running a zone of clearance to show the trees that are encroaching or close to encroaching along the uh, span. Again, I'll just show it again for those who missed it. Highly automated. Uh, all you need to do is select uh, one point along each of the conductors. Much like by Powerline, your deliverables are already ready on hand as you're running this function. Yep. So here you see automatically generated uh, encroachment, vegetation encroachment report. Uh, this is where your uh, vegetation penetration ability of your LiDAR is, comes into play and is so important uh, along most of your suburban uh, spans. Uh, you're going to need penetration to see exactly uh, how big or how large of a mass is encroaching along your conductor. 
uh, and you will find that uh, because the low voltage, uh, most uh, grid operators, maintainers will leave the uh, distance to encroaching uh, much, much smaller than your transmission level. So uh, we've seen anywhere from 30 centimeters uh, and above. So cutting it very close. Apart from your uh, power line encroachment analysis, we can also run your uh, clearance analysis, cadenary um, clearance analysis. So finding uh, whether it's along your trajectory, the centermost or the lowermost clearance of your uh, lowest scissor crossing. Again, uh, as you're running that function, automatically generate a report with your position uh, along the uh, lowest hanging conductor and the height that it clears. Uh, I don't know if Rudolf is here, but uh, kindly our Latvian uh, partner provided this data collected using the line mobile and uh, they actually process this themselves uh, in LiDAR 360 MLS. So you'll see running uh, your segmentation or your trees. And then obviously he has gone uh, above and beyond and vectorized all the uh, street signs and the power lines. I wanted to come back to this uh, scope of work of your metro suburban area. So again, what it requires, what it takes to actually complete work like this, um, because you'll find that actually distribution level grids are much more predominant than your transmission level. Uh, most countries will have uh, probably about four times uh, the distribution, uh, four times or more distribution grids uh, as compared to your transmission. So obviously bringing power to your uh, everyday user. So with our line mobile, we can collect and operate at a maximum uh, of actually 120 kilometers an hour, but you're highly not likely not going to be traveling that fast. Uh, taking example, if we travel at 50 kilometers per hour uh, for six hours, uh, on an average day, uh, we're collecting already 300 kilometers of your suburban metropolitan data. Uh, so covering a lot, uh, large uh, area. Again, the line mobile, like the uh, UAV systems, can be operated by a single person, uh, but recommended uh, for a two-person team, uh, as installation and acquisition can be um, a little bit easier managed by two people, and then. Largely similar, uh, apart from your colorized point cloud and uh, colorized and classified point cloud, uh, your vectorized spans, uh, your terrain models, uh, we can also provide uh, clearance analysis, cadenary cl clearance, uh, as well as your encroachment danger report. So last year, uh, Green Valley International, we covered uh, just over uh, 80,000 kilometers of uh, power line spans. Uh, I think 70,000 being more than 70,000 being transmission level. I am going to share a uh, fictitious uh, project case. Actually, it is real, uh, but with uh, fake names. Uh, you'll find that much of the power sector, uh, obviously, uh, rightly being so, uh, would like to remain in all, uh, unnamed uh, in terms of where these grids are and the companies that are operating them. So uh, in this proof of concept, your POC, uh, the client approached us to survey an area of 28 uh, transmission level uh, spans, so 28 towers. Uh, our team went out there, flew these 28 towers uh, in one day. It took just over four hours, so quite efficient.
one second, sorry. Uh, we use the LiAir 220N. Uh, previously, I mentioned the LiAir X3. Uh, the advantage that the LiAir 220N has over that system is its penetration uh, capabilities. So uh, the client wanted to test out um, more penetrative uh, system. And then obviously we use live power line for our post-processing. The results that we can see here, uh, the point cloud colorized and then your actual span classified uh, labeled uh, or sorry, classified by color. So your tower is being blue. Uh, not seen very clearly as it's a little small, but uh, the uh, insulators and other parts of the tower all, were also uh, automatically classified. And then along the tower, generating fine inspection reports, uh, sorry, fine inspection routes. Uh, carrying out these routes uh, using the Phantom 4, as I already mentioned. And then the project summary. Uh, obviously, we already know LiDAR is highly suitable uh, for terrains that are hard to approach, uh, whether it's due to uh, our drone system uh, year by year having uh, a longer reach, should I say, um, or if you're using beyond visual line of sight technique uh, to even extend that uh, reach further. And then uh, the for this POC, we provided uh, classified True color RGB, so true color point cloud, uh, your fine inspection reports, uh, infrared reports, uh, terrain models just for showcasing, and then your planometrics, so areas of interest, uh, which included vegetation, which was quite sparse in this area, uh, and then your buildings, uh, railways, if they were there, which they weren't here, and then water bodies, which can all uh, automatically be generated here. Uh, wind was a matter that they were interested in, the grid operators. Uh, so we generated these high wind reports. Uh, you'll find for your flatter uh, land, uh, especially very open, uh, there's going to be high wind. So uh, I mentioned the 28 towers. We collected this data within, uh, well, in about just over four hours. And then within 24 hours of us coming back to the office with that data, we were able to report. Uh, to deliver all of these uh, reports and different uh, models to the end user. Their feedback uh, after they uh, looked at this for a couple of weeks was that this was more detailed than anything they thought possible. This is a very common feedback uh, that we get from people who uh, do take the step to um, utilize LiDAR for your, their inspections. They, never thought that they could reach this level of detail uh, just by flying a drone with a LiDAR attached to it uh, over their grid, over their spans. And then if this was scaled up, which it has been this year, uh, would reduce time uh, as supposed to their um, largely manual approach by at least 200% and reduce costs uh, by up to 700%. So very positive feedback. Um, and hence, we have um, begun working with this uh, grid manager, grid uh, operator. So uh, that comes to the end of my sharing today um, on the Green Valley International's uh, intelligent inspection of power grids, transmission, subtransmission, and distribution level uh, towers and conductors utilizing LIDAR. Um, it's been an honor. Uh, I will leave the floor open. I've, I think there are already a few questions in the chat, uh, but if anyone has any questions or would like to go back and see any of the points discussed, uh, please do reach out now in the chat box um, and I will answer them for you now. All right, so Mr. Yin uh, Gopeng, uh, so for LiDAR mobile uh, mobile on the vehicle, so the LiDAR mobile on the vehicle, uh, what's the speed limit for getting enough scanning and data? Uh, you just said maximum uh, over 100 kilometers an hour. Could you give an upper limit? So uh, great question. Thank you. Uh, we have tested, uh, actually our partner has tested in Australia 
the system is able to uh, run, maintain, and generate a reliable point cloud at up to 140 kilometers an hour, um, which sounds crazy. Um, and you will very uh, highly doubt that you will operate at those uh, speeds, uh, maybe unless if you're uh, collecting data on the German uh, highway uh, for your transmission level along the roadside. But uh, yeah, 140 kilometers an hour, you're able to operate the line mobile at and get reliable data. Awesome. I'll just leave the floor open for a little bit longer. Uh, also, I did, before I forget, uh, everyone that is here today, firstly, thank you very much on behalf of Green Valley International and my, myself. Uh, for taking the time to come and listen. Uh, we are offering uh, free live power line uh, for three months to all in attendance. So if you would like to take advantage of this, please leave your uh, name, uh, the country in which you are at uh, or your company is based in and the name of your company. Uh, and tomorrow our team will send out those uh, license keys to you. So please leave your one, your name, uh, your company, uh, what country you are based in, um, and sorry, your email, of course. And we will send those out to you. Hi, Pete. Hi Pedro, David, Vitor, Vladimir. Thank you guys for coming. <laughs>